numbers, yeah! What's up tappers? Today we're going to be looking at songwriting and how you can improve your chord progressions by using numbers. But before we get into that, if you're new to my channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button and chime that bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. So, you may have noticed at the beginning of this video I was playing a chord progression with a series of numbers that came up. They were Roman numerals. I was picking them at random from one to seven. The idea of this video is to teach you how to take one to seven, pick some random numbers, and then write a song out of that. It sounds very random, but it's not gonna be by the end of this video. We're gonna be going through some basic music theory. Don't be afraid. I'm gonna really simplify it. This is a really great way to experiment. And if you're lost, you've got a chord progression, you can actually use this system to write down what the chords are and say, oh, I've gone to one, I've then gone to four, to five. Why don't I try going to two or six or seven? The reason these chords are all gonna work is because we're gonna be harmonizing the major scale and allocating certain chords to them. Don't worry if none of this makes sense at the moment. To spice things up even more in this video, I'm not gonna be using your basic major and minor chords. I'm gonna be using seventh chords. There's gonna be four types. There's your major seventh, your minor seventh, your dominant seventh, and your minor seven flat five, which is basically your half diminished chord. I'm gonna be teaching you one shape of each of those different chords, so don't panic. You only have to learn four shapes that you can move up and down the fretboard. It's gonna be fun and easy. I use these shapes all the time in my playing, so it's worth learning now if you don't know them. Before we go any further, let's learn the four different shapes for the seventh chords. So first up, we have a major seventh. So the idea of this is with the A string, that's where your root is gonna be. So on the third fret on the A string, that's C. We're gonna be doing everything in C today. Here is your major seventh chord in C. And how you play this is you put your first finger on the third fret, bar it from the A string down, and then you want to put your third finger on the fifth fret on the D string, and then you want to put your second finger on the fourth fret underneath on the G string, and under that you want to put your pinky on the fifth fret of the B string, and then you should have your barred note on the third fret on the bottom E string, so it should sound like this. And that is your C major seven. So as I said before, wherever this is, wherever your root is here on the A string, that's what the chord is. So that's a C, so that's a C major seven. If you move it up one, that's a C sharp major seven. One more D, D sharp, then E, then F, F sharp, G, and so on. Once you've got to 12th fret, this would be A. You can also play it down here, but your bar would be the nut. Oh, I've added a sixth there. So that's your first chord, your major seven. Next up, we've got a minor seven. So once again, we're gonna do it in C. So you wanna bar the third fret with your first finger. You wanna bar from the A string down. Then you wanna put your third finger on the fifth fret on the D string. Then you wanna leave the uh, next string open, the G, where it's gonna be barred on the third fret. Then you wanna put your second finger on the fourth fret underneath on the B string. There we go, and then play that. So that's your C minor seven. Once again, because the root's there, you can move this up and down everywhere. C sharp seven, D, D sharp. Then you go back down here, same chord, but you're getting rid of the bar because this is doing it for you here. So that's your major and your minor chord. So your major and your minor. Make sure you learn these thoroughly before you move on. Next up, we've got our dominant seventh chord. So once again, you're going to bar the third fret. Then you want to put your third finger on the D string on the fifth fret. Then leave the G string open again, so it's going to be on the 3rd fret. Then put your pinky on the 5th fret on the B string. And that is your dominant chord. 
So there's your first three. You've got your major, your minor, and then your dominant seven. And as you hear, they all sound lush. Next up, we've got the minor seven flat five chord. This is a bit more difficult to play. Uh, your fingers are in some weird positions, but let's do this. So put your first finger on the third fret on the A string. That's your root or your tonic. And then you want to put your second finger underneath on the same fret on the G string. Then with your third finger on the D string, you'll put on the fourth fret. And then very last finger, your little finger, you want to put that underneath your third finger on the fourth fret on the B string. And then you only want to play the uh, four middle strings, A, D, G, B. So that's quite cool. A trick with these uh, diminished chords is you can go up three frets and keep doing it every time. So, and it always sounds really cool. Okay, so that's your four different shapes. Pause this video if you don't know them and learn them. I would suggest that you keep practicing going between them. So you've got your major. Get used to doing the minor change. Going to dominance. Then diminish. Back to the beginning. So throughout this video, we're just going to be taking these shapes and moving them up and down the fret. As I said, on the A string, that's where your root is. So wherever you put this shape, that's what it is. So if I went to the fifth fret and played, I don't know, the minor shape, that would be D minor seven. If I played uh, the diminished one, so the minor seven flat five on there, on the fifth fret, that would be D minor seven flat five. And then of course, if I did the dominant one, that's D seven. So it's quite simple. You just change the shape and then you work out what it is by the note. If you don't know the notes, let's quickly go through them. So you've got A, your open A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So you're back to the octave here and starting again. A, A sharp, B, C, blah, blah, blah. You keep going up. Well done. You've now learnt the four essential seventh chords using the A shape of the cage system. Don't worry too much when I talk about the cage system if you don't understand it. But let's just say it's very cool. You only have another four positions to learn. We won't go through that in this video. But still worth noting you do know all the positions in the A shape for cage for the seventh chords. Okay, so we now have all the chords we need. You've learnt them all, well done. Let's now apply them to the numbers. To do this, we will need to understand basic music theory. Don't panic, I'm gonna explain it very simply. If you don't know already, the major scale has seven different notes. There is a formula that you can work it out and it is tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And what that means is, for your first note, your root note, your next one will be a tone, which is the first one in the formula. And a tone means basically move up two frets. So the next note would be. So that's your next note in your major scale. So C, D. So you then go to the next one, the formula, which is tone again. And then from D, you go up two frets. So then you've got your next note. So C, D, E. Da, 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 da. Ferrer Jacca, all that stuff. So we've gone through the formula so far. Tone, tone. Next one will be semitone. That means the next note is going to be one fret up. So you got. That's your fourth note. And we go back to the formula tone, tone, semitone, tone, tone, tone. So we can go up a tone again, two frets. So it's going to be. Then we go up a tone again, up a tone again. They should be back to the beginning. So that's the octave. So I'm not going to go through that too much. I hope you get the idea and the gist of that. So the seven notes in the major scale will be this. 
So it would be tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. That's the formula. Don't forget that formula. You can use it anywhere. Let's say you start on the uh, D string on the fifth fret. So that would be a G. You could work it out. It works on every fret anywhere. But today we're going to be using it to harmonize the major scale and make them into chords. This is where the numbers come in. So we know the major scale has seven notes. That means the major scale we can associate with every note a specific chord. There is also a formula for harmonizing your chords. So the first chord would be C major seven. So we're going to play our C note. Then we're going up to D, which is our next note in the scale. It's going to be a minor, so we're going to do the minor 7 shape we had. Then going up the scale again, this one's going to be another minor 7. So it's E minor 7. So we've got tone tone, then we've got the semitone, which is one up. The fourth chord is always a major 7. The next one's going to be a tone again, so up two frets. So that's G. The fifth chord is always dominant, so that dominant shape that we learnt. Beautiful. Once again, we've got another tone to go up. So this will be A, and this is going to be the sixth chord. The sixth chord is always a minor seven, so it sounds like this. You can also play it down here. But we're going to play up here, and then the final one, which will be seven, is going to be tone again, so it's going to be up to. This is your tricky one, your minor 7 flat 5, which is B. And then the final formula, which was a semitone, you go up one and you're back to the beginning. So what you want to practice now is the chords 1 to 7 and harmonising them. So here we go. My fingers are clicking. I apologize for that. Hopefully you understand that. So basically we're taking the major scale and just applying some formulas to that. So today we're in the key of C. If you want to change that, you want to go to the key of, let's say, I don't know, E. So your E would be here. Because we've only learned the chords on the A string, we have to move to wherever that is. And it happens to be on the seventh fret here. So if you wanted to work out those same chords, you'd have to do the same things. You'd have to do tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So it'd be like this. It's going to be quite tricky to play a lot of things up there, but you can move them back down here. So once again, same as the C major, we're going to follow that formula. So it's major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, diminished, major. That's your one to seven formula. So for E major, here we go. One chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord, and for the back to the root, we have to go down here. Okay, so now we understand what chords are associated with what number. This is where the fun comes in. So just to recap, Number one is going to be your major chord, your major seventh. Number two is going to be your minor seven. Number three is your minor seven again. The fourth chord is going to be the major seven. The fifth is always the dominant chord. The sixth is going to be your minor seven. And then finally, your seventh chord is going to be your minor seven flat five. That is how you harmonize any major scale. Now we understand that. This is where the fun and the songwriting can begin. Usually in most songs, we always start on the one chord. Why do you have to? Now you kind of understand the theory. Why don't you start on, let's say, the two chord? So that's right, number two. That's our first chord. Then let's try going to the sixth chord. So we know that's a minor and a minor. Maybe let's try then going to the one chord. I don't know if this is going to work but it's all correct in terms of it's all in the same scale. So it will sound right within itself, but 
It might not be the progression you're looking for, but this is where the fun comes in and you can mess around with loads of different ways to go. A few tricks that I'll tell you, a lot of the ends of your progression should end in the fifth chord because the dominant chord always wants to resolve back to the one. So maybe let's try that and then go to the third chord and then the fifth. So we're gonna go two, six, one, three, five, and then repeat. Well, that might not work, but we'll give it a go. Okay, in the key of C, we're gonna do what we learned originally. So you got your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's give it a go. So our two chord is here. Our six chord is here, but I might play it down here instead. So we've got the two, six, and then your one is here, your first chord. The third one is here. And then the fifth one is here. Let's see what it sounds like. So one, two, three, four. Something a bit different, it's not really leading anywhere, but as you can hear, it all works, which is pretty cool. So you can do what I've done, just write down a load of numbers and see what works, man. Some things might be really cool. You also might have a chord progression. Let's say you wrote something in D. You only had two chords, I don't know, the D. And you went to the F sharp and you didn't know where to go from there. If you go through my formula, let's go from the D and then work out the major scale. Then you wanna apply the different chords, so use that formula, major, minor, minor, major, dominant, minor, diminished. So you can find out, write all them down, one to seven, and write down what the chords are, then try going to different places. So now you know you've gone to one to three, you might wanna go one, three, two. Where'd you go from there? Maybe to the seventh? I bet you never thought to go to a diminished chord because you didn't know it, but now you do. There you go. So you've taken a boring progression that you had and you've spiced it up. So you might actually have exactly the same thing. So you might take this formula I've got and then make it even more simple. Get rid of the seventh chords. So you could go C major, D minor, E minor. Uh, what is that? F major. In the simplified one, there's no dominant, so you just go to a major chord on the fifth one. And then A minor. Then, then diminish. Then a major. Let's try another one. So let's go six, two, three, five, one. Let's try that. Six, two, three, five, one. Let's do that in the key of C. So the sixth chord, once again, I'm moving it from up here, just to down here, just to make it easier to play. So let's start there. So the sixth chord is to start. Sounds quite cool actually, so yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this. It should spice up your songwriting. And if you wanna get even more adventurous, you can change the chords from a major seventh to a major 11th or a major 13th. It's up to you, just look them up online. There's plenty of sites. Look for A shape for that and you can change it up. 
the formulas will always apply so it'll always be a major scale and it'll always be harmonized to major minor minor major dominant blah 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 those rules will always apply you just start from different points from one to seven if you've understood this you've basically understood how modes work and if you want a video about that let me know we'll do that in another one coming soon. Keep an eye on my website because I'm going to be releasing a golden songbook that gives you all the chords you'll need and you can apply all my theory using them. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was informative. Let me know in the comment section below whether I need to slow things down, speed things up. I'm learning as you guys are. Big thanks to these guys on my Patreon spores. They support me for five or seven dollars a month and in return they get their lovely names posted after all my videos. They also get access to my backing tracks and tabs from my previous videos and future ones. Also if there's some giveaways going on they get automatically entered into them. That's it guys, I'll see you for another video very soon. Dream.